When we look out at our planet Earth from space, we see a myriad of diverse colors. The sky itself is blue, as the atmosphere preferentially scatters shorter wavelength blue light in all directions, giving our atmosphere its characteristic color. The oceans themselves are blue, as water molecules are better at absorbing longer wavelength red light than they are blue light. Meanwhile, the continents appear brown or green, dependent on the vegetation, or lack thereof, growing there, while the ice caps and clouds always appear white. But on Mars, one color dominates, red. The ground is red, red everywhere. The lowlands are red, the highlands are red, the dried up riverbeds are red, the sand dunes are red, it's all red. The atmosphere itself is also red in every location we can measure it. The lone exception appears to be the ice caps and clouds, which are white, albeit with a reddish hue as observed from Earth. Yet quite surprisingly, the redness of Mars is incredibly shallow, if you dug just the tiniest bit beneath the surface, the redness vanishes. Here's the scientific story behind just what makes the red planet so red. From space, there's no denying the red appearance of Mars. For all of recorded history in a wide variety of languages, the redness of Mars has been its most prominent feature. Mangala, the Sanskrit word for Mars, is red. Har Dekar, its ancient name in Egyptian, literally means, red one. And as we've progressed into the space age, photos that distinguish the surface from the atmosphere clearly show that the air above Mars itself has an intrinsically red color. In Earth's atmosphere, Rayleigh scattering dominates, casting blue light in all directions while the red light travels relatively undisturbed. However, the atmosphere of Mars is only 0.7% as thick as Earth's, rendering Rayleigh scattering from the gas molecules in Mars's atmosphere a negligible effect. Instead, dust particles in the Martian atmosphere dominate in, likely, two ways, if you look at the suspended atmospheric dust in detail on Mars, and ask, what is it like, the answer is incredibly informative. Just from looking at its spectral properties, or, how it affects the light, we can see that the dust is very similar to the regions on Mars that, when we look at the dust in detail, particularly with the Omega instrument on ESA's Mars Express mission, we find that the most common type of dust comes from nanocrystalline red hematite, which has the chemical formula alpha iron 3 oxide. The particles that make up this hematite are small, between about 3 and 45 microns in diameter. That's the right size and composition so that the rapid Martian winds, which typically blow at speeds close to approximately 100 km per hour, continuously sweep large amounts of dust up into the atmosphere, where it remains fairly well mixed, even when there are no dust storms. When we look at the Martian surface itself, however, the story gets far more interesting.